and welcome to Outside Xbox. This is Show of the Week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week we discovered the nuances of communicating with other players in the division. I'm going to communicate by the uh, universal language of jumping jacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my just... sights trained on him. What? Oh, oh he's hostile. He's hostile. Take him down. <laughs> oh, you... You, you cheeky monkey. You jerk. Jumping jacks, then shoot them in the head. Yes, but it's the way that you shoot them in the head. So that's what you've been doing in the division then, is it? Well, that and closing car doors. How are you on my cars? Just try not to shoot at anyone who's trying to help you. What the hell is your problem? Why have you been playing it? Um, I've been taking my responsibility as a strategic homeland division sleeper agent seriously, Andy. As soon as I got the phone call to tell me that society had completely collapsed, I was hitting the streets of New York and neutralising looters before you could say survivalist gun nut, which I definitely am not. I prefer the term prepper, thank you very much. The division's take on New York City, as found in the beta test that's running right now, is in the middle of a crisis caused by a weaponized version of the smallpox virus. Some unknown baddies infected banknotes just before Black Friday, meaning that eager shoppers took home a dose of fatal pox to go with their new 55-inch 4K TV. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. The US government collapses within five days. Basic services like police, fire and Netflix stop working and the people get to looting. Your job is essentially to help rebuild civilization and not even in the fun, euphemistic way that involves your powers of procreation. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, people will do anything for survival. The Tom Clancy franchise has built a reputation for lethal realism, but in its open-world multiplayer gunplay, the division goes in completely the opposite direction. It's going to be jarring the first time you headshot someone and numbers come out instead of the fountain of brain matter you get in other Clancy games. But once you acclimatise to the idea that bad guys can soak up as many bullets as you can, The Division offers up a satisfying hybrid of shooter and online RPG in the same vein as Destiny. So far so good. My strike squads are moving in. They'll breach the main hall on your signal. There are detailed handcrafted story missions, an open world chunk of Manhattan full of loot and enemy encounters, and a terrifying player versus player area called the Dark Zone. Alert. A team member has disavowed the division. Your team is now designated Rogue. The Dark Zone is completely optional, but its lure will be strong because that's where the game's best, most exotic gear can be found. The catch is it has to be extracted and decontaminated before it can be used. That extraction process involves very publicly firing a flare into the sky and then digging in as other players rush in to rob you of your loot before the chopper arrives. You've got a bird inbound on your position. It's a bit like marching into a crack den and loudly announcing that you have a wallet full of 50s in your inside jacket pocket. Extraction operation complete. If you prefer to just concentrate on the story of the division, you can approach it any way you like. There are three distinct plot threads based on rebuilding security, technology and health services. But once the introduction is over, you can tackle the missions in any order you see fit and with up to three other people. Keep your heads down and keep it quiet. Of course, Andy, if you want to skive off your missions entirely and make it your job to deal with the fact that everyone in New York has left their car doors slightly ajar, then that's your lookout. What, was everyone in the city born in a barn? We've got your back. Just try not to shoot at anyone who's trying to help you. Over. So it's set in New York, where loads of people have died of a virus, they got off some manky banknotes, placed in a right state. Oh, a video game wrecking New York. That's a new one. You being sarcastic, or...? No, I've uh, literally never seen that before. But it sounds like you're being sarcastic. No, please do tell me about all the other occasions when it's happened. Can do, old friend, because The Division is only the latest in a long line of video games to make a real mess of New York City. <laughs> It's like game developers just can't stop laying waste to the Big Apple with alien viruses, snowpocalypses and ancient mythology. What did New York ever do to you, guys? Three more employees at their Times Square headquarters have been diagnosed with... 
Crisis gave New York a makeover in the style of what they called Urban Jungle, which is the kind of euphemism a city planner might well use when they're trying to sell you a metropolis that's been infested by aliens, an alien virus, bad humans with guns, and the odd bit of jungly foliage. Man, I heard it was an alien invasion. <laughs> yeah, right. Illegal aliens. What the fuck was that? It's bad times for tourism in the Empire State, what with the alien Seth wrecking up the place. What happened to these people? Just don't touch them. Hey! Looks like Lady Liberty took some heavy fire! Not to mention the extensive collateral damage by all that cell military hardware and, oh yeah, you in your supersuit. It's fine, I bet hardly anyone uses the Queensboro Bridge anyway. This is where Lefay researched Pandora's box. If you need a creature or creatures to lay waste to the city that never sleeps and you don't have Godzilla's number, then you should consider breaking into a New York museum, stealing an ancient relic called Pandora's box, and then opening it up because I guess you never heard of Pandora's box. The makers of video game Legendary, The Box, had never heard of it either, or only skim read the Wikipedia entry because in their game, Pandora's Box lets loose a load of mythical monsters, which then hit New York like it owes them money. If you thought catching a cab in NYC was hard before, you just wait till it's been taken over by werewolves, tentacles and angry griffins. Taxi! It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. Speaking of half-baked mythology, Indigo Prophecy, aka Fahrenheit, is yet another game which has it in for this one hell of a town. Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. Robert Frost wrote that some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice, and Indigo Prophecy is firmly in the latter camp, because you spend the whole game in the midst of a snowy Armageddon, with its epicenter in the city so nice they named it twice. The army has been mobilized to help provide shelter and basic necessities, but the cold and snow have hampered ground movement, and storms have shut down every airport in the country. Scientists are still unable to fully explain the reason behind the cold wave which has now gripped the entire planet. I mean, you'd think a bit of ice would be the least of New York's worries when powerful Illuminati-style factions are fighting for control of a prophesied miracle child, with which they can turn all humankind into slaves. But you tell that to Lucas wearing his gym jams when it's negative 55 degrees out. I'm leaving you here. You mustn't move, understand? I'll be back soon to get you. I hope. Three weeks ago, someone released a lethal virus in Penn Station. I woke up in a morgue. Now I hunt. I kill. I consume. I become. Another day, another exotic virus wreaks havoc in the streets of New York, New York. Only this time it covers the city with gross viney things and turns everyone into zombie-like plague monsters. The Blacklight Virus, as it's known, has made a real wreck of the birth city of Theodore Roosevelt. But on the bright side, you become a wicked shapeshifter with blade arms and Theodore Roosevelt would probably be totally cool with that. What's the SIT rep on New York? The Russian jamming rigs have neutralized our air support. As long as they maintain air dominance, it's a losing fight. We cannot lose New York. When your game is maximum destruction in the style of Michael Bay, you can't go far wrong with a Russian invasion coupled with some high-octane countermeasures by an American military on the back foot. Overlord, this is zero one. We are en route to the harbor. Over. Since the Russian invaders of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 installed a full-spectrum jammer on top of the New York Stock Exchange, there's been more military hardware downtown than in a, well, yes, a Michael Bay movie. We're hit, we're hit! It's raining on fire helicopters out there, and just to be sure there'll be nowhere for the stockbrokers to work come Monday, US forces cap it off by air striking the heck out of the financial district. Verify initial strikes on the Predator feed. Sir, it appears all sites have been neutralized. Oh man, now where will I broke my stocks? All primary threats neutralized. Good work, team. That's one for the books. 
I was being sarcastic, actually. Oh, I knew it. Now it's time to see what you've been saying in the comments and in division emotes. No stopping out here. Uh, about 11.30, thanks for asking. First up, your comments on last week's show about Resident Evil Zero and the prequels that shed new light on the original games. Normally the formula goes, release successful game, collect money, use money to make sequel. Every so often though, developers like to shake it up and tell you what happened before your favourite games in what we in the biz like to call a prequel. Some top suggestions from the Oxboxers, such as this from commenter Jan Jan, who says, Going along with the prequels theme, how about Bioshock Infinite's burial at sea DLCs? Does it count as a prequel if it's in an alternate dimension? I don't, I'm gonna start getting nosebleeds again. Okay, how about this from commenter James Everett? What, no Deus Ex Human Revolution? Yes, that sets up the essential conflicts of the Deus Ex universe, the nature of humanity, the Akarian parallel. And in my game, it sets up a sequel where an angry subway dancer pursues Adam Jensen for punching him every time he crosses Detroit. Sure, and that. And commenter The Reactator adds, in the list of best prequels, Portal Stories, Mel, even if it's not canon. Now for the comments on this video about the time Dying Light gave Jane and Andy a buggy that dispenses mines. I'm gonna get in the back. I'm gonna get in the front. You see me in the front? Yep, I'm gonna tell you when to drop mines. Right. I'll see you in there, all right. Okay. Commenter Drake Aurum is impressed. They say, that was an excellent display of Minecraft from Jane. While Pathetic Industries points out, looks like that zombie at 106 puked on the mine and that caused it to explode. That's exactly how I want to go. Come on, zombie. It's like you don't even wanna catch me. There, <laughs> there we, go. we go. And Ryan Stanley says, Paul, I think he's dead, Andy. Well, can't hurt to make sure. It's like laying okay. an egg. And yeah, lay one now. Lay an egg. Okay, right. now stop. Lay mine. Yes. Nice and Gina. pull. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right, now that's taken care of. Here are the comments on this video about the terrible birthday parties not even Kate could save. Long story short, his lack of respiratory system means he can't even enjoy the party horns he's bought. No one other than you turns up. It all gets pretty awkward. And there's so much leftover pizza, you get a mission objective to take some home with you. And yet, Claptrap doesn't seem too disappointed. That was the best party I've ever thrown. Does that make it worse? I think that makes it worse. Sluntrox points out that, minus the party, but wasn't the beginning of Last of Us on Joel's birthday. Oh yeah, probably not a top 10 birthday, that one. And Jason Christian thinks that, beyond two souls, the party mission is the worst birthday party ever, in my opinion. Ah, kids. And finally, the Rupert Litterbin has had his whole world shaken, saying, I didn't think it was possible for a birthday party with Liam Neeson there could suck. Fallout proved me wrong. No, I don't want your goddamn poem. I wrote you a poem just for you. I hope you like it. So you're telling me you, you wouldn't want a bleak poem about servitude and death for your birthday? Why, is that what you've got? <laughs> no. Your real presence in the studio, I'm just gonna go and get it. I hope it's scale -extric. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. And before you go, don't forget to hit the electronic thumb for a chance to be picked up by a passing Vogon spaceship. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So, did he like the poem? I didn't give it to him. What do we do? Oh, um, we go back in there. You get attacked by fungus zombies and I'll telekinetically burn the place down. Love it. Excellent plan. <laughs>